I am a coach by nature. Um, I am a minister. I am an author of the book On the Brink of a Breakthrough, which gets you to your breakthrough. I do uh, group coaching through my faith based um, signature program, Bridge to Breakthrough, um, and uh, work each and every day. So with that being said, I love, absolutely love doing this. I am called to build up and edify others. And I do that uh, through the venue of professional speaking, um, authoring books, blogging, um, ministering, preaching the gospel, um, and just day to day being witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to stop by with some tips that I believe have helped me to do this. Sometimes we can need personal development and that is okay. And that takes time because we're constantly growing. If you're not growing, something's wrong. Um, you're dead spiritually, emotionally, physically, somewhere in there. Um, and you need to wake up. Personal development um, has been one of the most um, biggest blessings in my life. And so that is what I like to teach from. I like to teach from my experience and I like to teach from the word of God. So that being said, today's title um, for your breakthrough is how to get over yourself. All right, because sometimes um, we have external situations and circumstances um, that prevent us from growth, but then other times we need to get our own selves in check, right? So, with that being said, I hope the 10 tips um, that I share with you today can help you to get over yourself and get out of your own way so that you can experience your breakthrough. Here we go. Number one, you are not perfect. None of us are. We will all make mistakes at one time or another. But I tell you what, um, there is grace for mistakes. You got to learn to give yourself grace. You got to learn to allow yourself without guilt, without shame to say, hey, I made a mistake. Let me get back up and get back in the game and this time better because I'm not just going to get back up and dust myself off, but I am going to take the lesson from the failure from the fall down from the mistake i'm going to take the lesson from it and it's not going to be a mistake anymore i'm going to use the bricks um that i tripped over to build help me build where i'm going so we are not perfect but we are loved you got to know that above all we're all going to make mistakes but you are loved God loves you. Hopefully you love yourself. All right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's at least one person out there who loves you. Um, if not hundreds and hundreds upon thousands of more people that love you. So with that being said, number one, um, one way to get over yourself is realize you're not perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You may not be perfect, but you are loved. God loves you. And hopefully you love yourself very deeply. Um, so with that being said, number two, Another way to get over yourself is to check what stories you are believing. What stories are you telling yourself? Um, every time something happens, are you going into this saga and drama of how bad it is and what other people are doing and how you think other people are perceiving you? I mean, seriously, is it a lifetime drama every time you make a mistake? Um, I want to challenge you to check yourself check what stories you are believing because when something out of the ordinary happens or when life happens or when a mistake happens you can ask yourself two things what story am i believing and what can i do right now to help the situation all right and that will bring you back to a place of soberness and a place of truth number three maybe you do need to make some updates okay a lot of times like i said we are focused on our external circumstances how about some time of reflection to see internally um, what updates you need to make what updates you can make um, every now and again your computer if it's like mine will shoot you a message that says um, update needed or maybe you turn on your computer and it's right in the middle of an update at like 80 percent and you're like wait a minute but i was working <laughs> And so now the computer will ask you, um, do you want to do this update now or do you want to do it later? Um, most of the times, ah, 
I choose later because usually I'm working I'm typing I'm blogging I'm writing I'm doing something um, Facebook live what have you and so I choose later well if we're gonna get over ourselves, we gotta stop choosing update later. And we gotta get updated in our mind, our will, and our emotions, and renew our mind, renew our thinking, renew the story we're telling ourselves about certain situations. All right, and ask ourselves, all right, what can I do right now that will sober this situation up? Am I just believing, going off of my feelings, or am I believing the truth? All right. So with that being said, we're number we on four. We're number four. Um, expectations how to get over yourself stop having poor expectations number one stop putting expectations on yourself that are unreasonable okay make yourself a list in the morning and when you look at that list say if I do these things am I going to be satisfied with doing these things all right is that gonna make me fulfilled outside of you just getting up going to work you know doing your daily grind what have you um, Am I going to be satisfied with doing these things? And maybe going to work is one of those things. Number one, going to work successfully. Number two, working on my business. Number three, paying down debt. Number four, um, ministering to somebody who needs it. Uh, number five, uh, having quiet time, devotion time. So maybe you write these things down. Um, and so you don't put these heavy, heavy expectations on yourself um, to perform when it's just way off key, all right? And then don't put such heavy expectations on other people, okay? If those people don't even know you have an expectation, your feelings are gonna be hurt all the time, okay? So with that being said, watch your expectations. Come on, we're trying to get over ourselves. We know other people have done things to us. Maybe we deserve them, maybe we didn't deserve them, but now we're focusing on us right now. So with that being said, watch your expectations. Make sure they are sober. Make sure they are true. When I have an expectation to sit in my chair at work, I have an expectation that that chair is going to hold me up because it's held me up before. It's held me up for a year now. So I'm pretty sure that if I sit in it, it's going to hold me up. It's okay for me to have an expectation there. If somebody puts a different chair there, I might check before I sit down. Okay? You get my point? So with that being said, check your expectations. Make sure they're sober concerning yourself and concerning other people. Ask, because I know a lot of times that as women, we have all of these haughty expectations and then when our expectations are not met, our feelings are hurt and then we get into our feelings and it's this whole long drawn out saga. Well, let's counter that by assuring that our expectations are sober, whether they're for ourselves or for other people. All right, with that being said, let's move on down the list. Okay, now we talked a little bit about this. We touched on it, but I really want to touch on it because I've been teaching young ladies this. Um, young ladies in society are so hard on themselves um, due to not having um, the right behaviors modeled before them not loving themselves um what different people are speaking to them negatively social media is a huge one the expectation that i need to look like that person on social media or i need to um stress and struggle and strive to to look like that because that's what they look like and that's who i look up to or that's who i see every day on social media and so with that being said i've been talking about this topic a lot with young women um and it is to fail forward there's such a strong emphasis on um I just need to be perfect every day, every way. My makeup needs to be perfect. Everything about me needs to be perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. And they're striving so for this perfection. There's nothing wrong with doing things in excellence. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about a lopsided sense of perfection that is not based in the word of God, knowing who you are in God first, okay? Not putting crazy expectations on yourself that poof, overnight, I'm gonna look like Halle Berry. I mean, no, I'm satisfied with who I look like, even sounding nasally, and you know, I got a little eye stuff going on, but it's okay, I still love myself. I realize I'm not gonna wake up and look like Halle Berry, and guess what? That's okay, because I love me. But these young girls, these young ladies, they wanna look like these stars, they wanna look like these reality stars, and when they make a mistake, it crashes their 
world. So I want to encourage us that when we do fail, we fail forward. Even as I shared with the young lady recently, you're going to fail in life, but that is okay. Matter of fact, you want to fail sometimes because it's in those times that you can pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, and really gain confidence. How are you going to gain confidence from failing, really? Because you're going to try again, and you're going to get better at that thing and better at that thing, and that's how you're going to gain confidence. That's how you gain confidence at anything. Practice makes perfect. You keep doing it right. You keep doing it right. You keep doing it right. Before you know it, you get confident in it. That's okay. Then you can even teach somebody else. And that goes for anything in our lives. Okay. So with that being said, we're going to fail. Just fail forward. All right. Don't wallow. Next, how to get over yourself. You got to learn how to laugh at yourself. You got to learn how to lighten up, okay? I know that we endure some serious times and I know that we are in some pretty heavy times in our world today. But you, the Bible says that laughter is like medicine, okay? It's like medicine to the bones. So you got to find some way, somehow, to keep a smile on your face, to keep your heart pure, to keep your heart open, to joy, to peace. Um, the Bible also says that the joy of the Lord is our strength the joy of knowing Jesus it's our strength okay so you don't want to lose your joy because when you lose your joy you lose your strength and you don't want that to happen okay so with that being said laugh a little lighten up and you know what else you know what else really gets me laughing when I laugh at myself when I do something funny or I say something funny that maybe <laughs> nobody else even thinks is funny but I laugh at myself or when I make a mistake I've learned how to laugh at me okay so with that being said um lighten up lighten up get over yourself lighten up all right don't be so serious all the time okay don't be so stressed out all the time you ain't got to be stressed out all the time serious all the time all right smile a little enjoy life relax a little and just let god have his way all right so with that being said forgive if you're gonna get over yourself oh my gosh oh we mm. <laughs> you gotta forgive I know, I know, I know I know what you're saying I know what you're saying I know what you're saying I'm gonna check the time right now Okay, alright I know what you're saying You're like, that thing is hard You don't know what they did to me You don't know what they said to me Check it out I may not know But I've been hurt I've been bitter I've been angry I've been lied to I've been stabbed in the back I've been cheated on um, I've been let down I've let myself down I've lived in regret I've lived in shame um, a condemnation where I've torn myself down through many different situations so I know how hard it can be to number one forgive yourself and to number two forgive others I get it I understand it and I'm not telling you that it happens overnight but we are commanded as believers to forgive why because God has forgiven us so if you don't forgive your brothers and sisters then you're not going to be forgiven and you are like I say all the time you are not forgiving them for them you are not saying hey what you did I agree with what you did no you're saying the exact opposite. I do not agree with what you did. If you hurt me or harm me in any way, um, talked about me, misused me, abused me. If you did any of those things, that is wrong. It does not line up with the will and the word of God. And it does not line up with me. It does not line up with my value. Okay. And my self-worth. It doesn't line up with that. But what I'm saying is in order for me to continue to grow and not be stagnant, not be dead on the inside, I must release you. I must forgive you so that I can move forward in freedom because forgiveness frees you. It may not free them. They may go on hurting the next 25 people but see the thing is you can't change them you have no control over them you have no control to change them it's like having a pet rattlesnake okay ultimately that rattlesnake is going to bite you okay it's going to leave a root of bitterness and before you know it that bitterness is going to affect every area of your life. And when you have, um, when you open the door to a root of bitterness, it frustrates that grace of God, that un 